Philly sample on too. Mm-hmm. This is the shot that matters. It is. Drops it two pins away from his first tour title. Uh huh. What a performance. Incredible. First couple of shots didn't look like he was even breathing. And then he got real comfortable, made some really great shots. Stayed clean, nine spares and strikes only this entire game for Booker. Yes, folks, history was made yesterday in the state of Nevada. Besides playing gambling, um, Booker becomes the third ever African American to win a PBA major tournament on the professional bowlers tour. You got to go back to the days of, was it Adam? Uh, let's look at the list back in the days. Back in the day when we used to watch it, we remember these gentlemen here. Uh, D. Ron Booker became the third you know, African American hit black player on Twitter. You know, PBA needs to change that. Um, all of the major champions. D. Ron won the United States Open. Gary Faulkner Jr. won the 2015 World Championship, the old National Championship. Now, yep, now I was first. there. Yeah, yeah. National Ball came for that. And then the guy who started it all off is George Brandon III, who won you know, 1993. 1993 is not, it wasn't the Firestone people. It was the general tire tournament yes, champions. And that's right, Chris. So, Tom Park, if you're out there tuning in, driving to, to, to Michigan or whatever you're doing, make sure you got everything all correct because, you know, that's, you know, that's a very big thing there, you know. Yes. So, 
But Adam, it's pretty cool. You know, on Easter Sunday, he wins a title in front of so many people of his friends. Right. Yeah. Made a trip from New Mexico. It looked like a whole you know, stadium full of people. Yeah. And yeah. It's I didn't get a chance to watch it. I saw the replays of it because I was, I was um, working. Yeah. Because I watched, I watched it, and it was like, I mean, a, the two finalists were going for their not not only their first major win on the PBA tour, first win overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. And then he had an opportunity to win because our friend Patrick Demowski, who uh, you know we, we had on our show. A couple yeah. months ago, I reached out to him over the weekend on Saturday and said, you know, good luck on Sunday. He goes, thanks, sir. I appreciate it. You know, and I always gave him that luck that he needed. Yeah. You know, but he got yeah. the luck. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. He got the luck. Uh, yesterday, the oil pattern, um, well, it, it, um, it, it was a quite a tricky one, you know. Uh, well, I think they should right? do that. Um, I think, he, I think he, Major Jason. should have tricky. Yeah. Oil pattern, and it's and it's like Patrick Dombrowski, TB Jason, Belmonte with a ball known uh from Storm known as Fate, mm -hmm. and it's like uh yeah, and uh, oh yeah. Before we go any further, I want to say uh, condolences to everyone. You know uh, what happened last week in in. Baltimore, Maryland, with the Francis Scott Key Bridge, you know, um, when I saw that, I, of course, was thinking of you, Chris, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, it was fascinating. This time last week, we were just getting, we were doing our show and having a great time, and yeah. you know, and then who do you know around 1.30 in the morning, things have changed around here in, in the state of Maryland. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was, um, I believe, Chris. Now, uh, now, if you want to go to the other side of the bay, you know, you have to go around on the beltway, and that's annoying. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I yeah. believe it. Yeah, but our condolences to to the family, you know, the seven families, and luckily there's only seven families, dude. It could have been worse. Yeah, it could have been true. three o'clock in the afternoon, or could it could have been eight thirty in the morning? Yeah, when everyone was using, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, and and, and uh. uh Bridge has been standing for, it was standing for a long, long time. But 50 Chris, years. You know, it, was built, it was built 1972. It was starting to be built in 72. Yep. It took five years to finish. And it was done in 1977. Yes. And and it was it's it was a it was a figure of the image of Baltimore. If we if you ever come up 95 into yep. Maryland, you know, you'll always see the bridge to your right. Mm -hmm. and, and I had to make it as you know analysis you know I came up with an analysis it was like this is this was our 9-11 yeah that's because, because we didn't know what happened you know it was 1 30 in the morning yeah. you know a, t a, a vessel hit into the p a pier of the bridge it wobbled and fell down mm -hmm. you know we didn't know if there was cow's disease we knew there was like two or three people were in the water mm -hmm. at 2 30 in the morning and the water was very cold yes it was 45 degrees and that can yes. really you know hypothermia really could kick in yes and then um and then i'm just checking my phone here um and then all of a sudden you know we got you know and then daybreak came up and mm -hmm. it looked really disastrous and yeah and yeah. to me it reminded me when i my first time going back up to long island new york where mm -hmm. i'm from and we always we always saw when we got on the Verrazano Bridge, my family and I. Yeah. We always saw the the, the towers. Yes. Oh, and the towers. And my mom said the towers made her feel like we're home. Yeah. That was gone the first time we went up there. Wow. And we were trying to figure out what what the hell happened here. What's going on here? Yeah. You know, but you know, our condolences to the families and you know and. The people who are our first responders who are out there right now building a uh, little channel to try to get people in and out, you know. So it'll probably, we'll take, a, it'll yeah. probably take a long time for yeah. you know, a new bridge, you know, to be constructed again because, you know, uh, it, 
and, and giving a lot of people headaches up there. Oh, yeah. The it starts tomorrow because everybody's back from it. Was Luckily, it was on a uh, spring break. Yeah. That's, that's but true. now tomorrow is the first day back from everybody from spring break. <laughs> and, um, I, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, Chris. Uh, um, while we're on the air tonight, um, yeah. there's a there's a really huge women's NCAA basketball game taking Great. place in Albany, New York. Um, mm -hmm. a rematch of the national championship game from last year between LSU and Iowa. And um, did you hear what? came out from the Washington Post and the LA Times about LSU women's basketball and well, head coach Kim Mulkey. I'm not surprised because she, I had her on, I had a chance to talk to her last year on yeah. Zoom and she's very cocky. Um, I've, yeah. Yeah, I've she, heard... thinks your, she thinks your shit don't, no offense, shit, shit don't stink. Yeah, you know, like, you're know, like, okay, you went to, you, you were at Baylor for how many years and you won what, what three national titles? Mm -hmm. Whoopee, we'll buddy. Whoopee. We'll yeah. You know? And now you come to LSU and you win one, and now you feel like you're, you know, the king of the queen of uh, college basketball. And then you have, no offense, Angel, you know, Reese, who is an no offense, folks. I hope you don't get offended if you're here in the state of Maryland. She's a piece of trash. Yeah. You know, she's an embarrassment to Baltimore City. I hope people, if people tune in to listen to this, I'm sorry. She is not the, a role model that your kids want to see playing basketball. Like Caitlin Clark. There you go. Yeah. Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Clark, who I had a chance to see down at College Park beginning of, uh, I think it was in January. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 30th. That's a role model you should, you know, model your, your girls, your daughters, and you know, your, 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 ne your nieces after because she doesn't map off. She does. She gets up there and does her game. Yes, during the game, she's kind of like feisty and yelling at the ref, like, "What's that?" You know, mm -hmm. But that's what normal people. She's a basketball player who is from in, in, from Iowa, who reminded me. You know, it's just my opinion, folks. This is all my opinion. This is not anybody else's opinion. She reminded me of a, a female version of Larry Bird. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I would agree with that. I mean, Larry the way Clark does. Yeah. Business. Angel Reese is the Magic Johnson of women's basketball because Magic Johnson used to, you know, he was magic. You know, nothing wrong yeah, with that. I don't, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, even though I, even though we weren't, yeah, born yet, Chris. I mean, I mean, we all remember 1979. You know, uh, NCAA championship in Salt Lake City. It was, it was Magic Johnson and mm -hmm. and the. Michigan State Spartans taking on Larry Bird and the from French Lake, Indiana, in mm -hmm. Indiana State State Morse. Right. So let's go back to bowling yesterday. We we're waiting yeah. for, you know, trying to get Booker on. I guess uh, the communication between the uh, Masters and myself, you know, we, you know, because it's hard yesterday was a holiday. So it was like people wanted to get out, and then I guarantee you they wanted to get out of that bowling center and get to their families for for meals. Yeah. And, and yeah. I totally understand that. Mm -hmm. um, let's go back to the match before uh, Booker was waiting in the wings of this match between our friend Patrick Dombrowski mm -hmm. and Belmo. Mm -hmm. Belmo was like cruising because he just but he just beat Sam Tully yeah uh, Cooley in the second match. Did. So he gets rolling, okay. So here's what mm -hmm. happened, folks. This is this is what bowling is all about. You know, you know, you got to realize things. You know, if you're going smooth, everything's clicking. Then everybody starts making comments like, "Oh, he's he's cheating. Is he cheating? No, he's not cheating." But this is actually what makes you look like what bowling is surely truly is. Mm -hmm. It's a sport that you don't know what happens when you throw that nice, beautiful bowling ball down the line, down the lanes. And we'll, we'll we'll talk more about this in a minute. So here. Here is our great friend, Rob Stone, on the call. So here it is. Way right of target. Are you kidding me? I should have stopped. Why didn't I? I, I can't keep up. Why didn't I? With this pendulum of momentum, this is insane. 
So what did he mean? I should have stopped. Oh wow! I what mean, is, what, I'm, I was watching that clip like three times over before I put it on the M. Mm -hmm. thing here, and I'm thinking he should have stopped. What should he just go, should he just gone down straight down the lane and hope for the best? I'm um, well. I mean, I mean that's something I, I would love to talk to ask him if he was on the show tonight. What do you mean I should have stopped? Yeah, I mean it's like. I mean, yeah, weird. did you get up there too quickly, or you know? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's, it's um, yeah. I mean, it's like I, was, yeah, should, I mean, when I was watching it yesterday, I, I was like, "You have got to be kidding me!" I was like, "What in the world has happened?" And it's like, well, um. Uh, that left lane yesterday, Chris. Uh, did you saw the high? Um, mm -hmm. when you saw the highlights, um, uh, it wasn't it wasn't easy yesterday. And I mean, I truly thought Jason the money had it in the bag, but yeah. um, yeah, it's called. You never know. That's my, <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah. when I. I mean, Chris, when I go to Akron in at the end of the month for the tournament of champions, I could I I could ask Jason about that. I uh, yeah, ask uh, him. You know, you know, ask him off the off the off the record. You know, don't do it on the microphone or anything. I'm just not going ask, to. Just ask him. What do you mean? I got to. I had to stop. Oh well. Because to me, it's confusing. Anyway. Yeah. So uh, speaking of uh, confusing, we had that on set on Sunday. We have another team actually. Uh, um, Towson finally, you know, yeah, won they series. actually won a series against. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Chris, they knocked off, they knocked off George Washington and to two or mm -hmm. three from Hofstra over the weekend. Hofstra. And I know Coach uh, Tyner, who's right in the uh, in the back back room here, he said, What 11 to get to the uh, CAA uh, tournament? Yes. Yes, yes, Chris. So, That's right. So you got you got those that that uh, series sweep or win over Hospira. So you said eleven to get to the CA tournament. So I guess that's adrenaline now that everything is clicking. Well, what I said was we had to losing the first three. Right. We had eleven more to go. Okay, so I we, we need to be sixth place or better to qualify. And the and the way I look at it is that we need to be 500 or better, you know. So okay. that would in a 20 game, 27 game series season, we would be 14 and 13, 13 and 14. I've seen it work, but you know, I, I'd love love to be 14 and 13. But I I told the guys if we were 13 and 14, it would be a, you know, we we'd have a chance. So we had 11 losses to play with. And we only mm -hmm. burned one this weekend, so that was okay. To beat a team like Hofstra, very well done. Very well done. Yeah, good job. Good job on that. You started off uh, even on Wednesday beating a good George Washington team, coming back behind and holding them off on the road. We did. Yeah, yeah we did. That's a good um, start. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a very good baseball team in George Washington. They took care of business when they were up here. But even if you remember that game, it was 4-4 four to four in the 7th. You know, and we walked the world and gave it to him seven to four. You know, down there we tried to do the same thing. We tried to give it right back to him. It was eight to eight to four going into the ninth, and uh, they got a, I think, one hit and then an infield hit, and then the walk parade was on. We, we're, we're just struggling from uh, finding the strike zone from the pitching mound. So it's something I'm sure we'll we'll continue to work on and get better at. But whoo, man, when you put those extra runners on base. You know, bad things are going to happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and you can't, and plus the errors are getting a little bit better. You're not, you're not like, you know, you don't have like no errors in the game. Everybody, is, everybody has an error in baseball, no matter what it is. You know, you don't see the men, the men, you know, the major leagues, you know, the Orioles had two errors, you know, someday and they still won. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you have four errors in the game, that's a little hard to win the game if you have four errors or more. Because you got to make sure that other team screws up too at the same time, and then you can pull off the win. I tell my guys at the beginning of the year there are certain things that happen in every baseball game 
and usually one and a half error at this level is what can be anticipated. Some obviously go zero, but more than likely you're one to two errors per game. And if you can keep it at that, you're right, Chris, you get a, you got a shot. If not, you got to make the other team make some errors too. I mean, it's got to be a serve and volley thing, you know, and uh-huh. as, as, as they know, I, I tell them straight up, nobody's perfect, man. We're not going to play the perfect game. It's not going to happen. We're not going to have a pitcher throw nine. I mean, the, the perfect inning, it's just not going to happen, you know? So mm-hmm. if it did, it would be great. It'd be an added bonus, but let's be real. Let's, let's figure out what we could be good at. And if we know going in, we have one and a half errors to use. Well, when we get to one, knock it off let's play you know that's it we want to walk three to four guys a a day not eight to nine you know certainly not 11 hit five i mean we've hit 53 batters this year already 53 53 free bases are tough to over so you know we got to do a better job of, of pitching it and then one one good thing that happened this weekend that was really uh really good to see was we came back from a five to one deficit on Sunday and the pitching staff really, really nailed it down for us. I mean, it was good because Hofstra can hit. I mean, they are a good hitting team. So it was, it was good to see. It was, it was a beautiful day out yesterday. It's like, you know, and a great, great day for baseball. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. This might've been, this might've been Friday. Friday. Okay. Yeah. It's still, it's still a great weekend for baseball, except for you had Saturday with a little rain, but that was kind of before your game was over before that. Yeah, yeah. And we were in that Saturday game. Our game was a five to one loss to Hofstra that day, but we had runners on first and third in the bottom of the first and didn't score with one out. Mm-hmm. Then we had runners on first and third in the fourth inning and with one out and didn't score either. You score both of those runs or at least one run in each one of those opportunities. That's a different ball game. You know, now we've got the lead two to one. They don't, they, maybe they don't add to it. Maybe the momentum swings into our dugout and you go from there. But it just, it, you know, they're a good team. They're going to, they're going to do some damage along the way. And, and of course, now we're their biggest fans. <laughs> you know, now yeah. they got to go out and beat everybody that they play, just like we got to continue to go out and beat everybody that we play. Yeah. And coach, it's called, um, and this week you don't have uh, a midweek game. Like, you know it's coming up this coming weekend. Those dreaded Huskies from up up in Boston, and you, uh, you know how the and you know how the they are. So, um, what will be some other things you'll work on? You know, in practice this week, you know, to get ready for the three game series against Northeastern. Uh. We, we kind of looked at our schedule and we figured this was as close to the mid point in the year that we, we could have. Mm-hmm. So we wanted to make sure that we had nothing going into the Northeastern weekend so that we could try to identify some areas to work on. Obviously, uh, pitching perfection is one of those. But this was also the week where we hoped we'd be able to maybe take a deep breath. And if somebody was injured, get them back. Uh, kind of identify what's going on. I mean, in the last two weeks, we've lost Nate Nabholtz to mm-hmm. a partially torn UCL. Mm-hmm. We've lost Avery Heupel to a broken screw uh, for a part that was repaired in his kneecap. Mm-hmm. So he's out. Nate is out now. We're in the process of getting Bobby Spencer and Luis Rivera back. So we hope to have Rivera live this weekend and that's an arm on the back end. So that's good. The, the flip side of that though, is Andrew Luzak has been starting for us on Friday night. And that kid has just been getting better and better every weekend. Jake Michael better and better every Mm -hmm. weekend, Jordan Luton better and better every weekend, you know? So, uh, and, and that's good to see Uh, different people contributing from the beginning of the year means, okay, now we're starting to get into the flow. Who's going to really rise to the, you know, they say the cream rises to the top. So mm-hmm. now we get to see what's happening. Cole Stefano having a breakout year for us. 
a sophomore walk-on hitting 284, playing a mean center field, stealing bases, driving in runs. Bryce Frederick got hot again this weekend. Really good to see him get there. Tay Robinson won Rock Rookie of the Year this week. So you know, that was pretty cool to see after going 6-14. Uh, you know, he had, uh, it's good to see cause he's had a rough go of it at third base. Mm -hmm. Um, but people got to remember he sat out all year last year. He didn't play baseball on the field in a competitive game until June when he joined his summer league team. So he'll, he'll get it done. He's getting better. Mm -hmm. He's starting to settle in himself. So really cool stuff seeing him play. Yeah. And it's like, um, oh, you know, when it comes to, you know, all these freshmen, you know, uh, sometimes they'll have success right away, and sometimes, you know, it'll take, you know, toward the middle of the year, you know, you know, for them to start clicking. And, um, you know, um, the last time you guys had a, a CAA rookie of the week was last year. So it's like, um, yeah, I mean, you know, Nice to see, you know, the freshmen, you know, starting to um, make some waves down there in Towson. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We also had a, uh, a new freshman shop or pop into the dugout yesterday. I uh, call him a freshman. He's, he's much more than that. It's our new president, uh, his first year on campus. So he'll nice. Yeah. He, cool. was in, he was in the dugout. He threw out the first pitch. Nice. Uh, then he hobnob with my parents on this in the stands and he stayed with us the whole game i mean nice. come on that's a busy guy man yes. he, was, he wasn't gonna yeah. leave he wasn't <laughs> gonna leave and he stayed he sat right next to me at, nice. the, at the end and you know we were up 10 what was it uh, i don't even know can't remember the score but anyway lead off double in the bottom of the ninth and he said or top of the ninth he goes what are you gonna do and i said what do you think i'm gonna do I said, I'm about ready to, you know, I have to go get a towel here. You know, <laughs> he said, <laughs> I feel the same way. Get two. And I was like, it's only going to get tighter, Doc, before it gets, you know, uh, a chance to take a deep breath. He goes, and you enjoy doing this? I said, oh, it's it's my whole life, man. Yeah. I said, sit back and enjoy this ride. It's going to be a booger. You know, yeah. so then, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean. Uh, and he did. He was he was a champ. It was That's good. Cool. I mean, uh, it was hey, Chris, special, up. special to have him in the dugout with us. And when we won, I mean, he, he was full of emotion, just like the rest yeah. of us, you know. So it was yeah. great. Amazing. Uh, That's cool. Cool. Hey, okay. Chris. Oh, oh, okay. oh, oh. We need to get the president of Townsend on and also the athletic director. You know what I mean? We'll see. We can, I can reach out to them. See what their schedules are. Why not? I mean, we've had a lot of coaches from Townsend. On. I mean, we've had the. We, we have everybody. Coach. Yeah, we got uh, coach. Uh, we got coach Matt on now. We got yeah, coach Pete coming on in a few minutes because of spring ball you know, for football. Yes. Yeah. You know, everything. Everything's. It's a lot of cool things going on at Towson. Plus, yeah. this weekend yeah. I was going to say, coach, you're taking on a, one of the Glavin boys on Saturday this weekend. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I would, yeah, I would. I think I remember them Glavins from when yeah. they pitched in Atlanta. It's, it's, Mike. Day. it's not Tom. It's Mike. Yeah. You, you, it's Mike, you yeah. know, I would like to not like him, but I can't. <laughs> He's such a nice guy and such a great coach. I mean, look at what they do up there. I, you know, I know, he is phenomenal. So I can't, I, you know. I, I can't say anything bad about him. I can't even say that, you know, it, it's, it's, it is a mean rivalry and I can it tell is. you this much. We have I not mean, had any success up there. We beat them a couple times down here and we need to beat them this weekend yeah, we right. to yeah. keep this going. And, and I think we're going to play them extremely, extremely hard. I, I really yeah. do. Uh, I but once again, true. they're talented, you know, they're five and one in the conference. Uh, they're on the heels of UNCW. That's going to be a great series, you know. Yeah, so, next week. yeah, next week. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we'll uh, we've got our back to back uh, series here with uh, Northeastern and UNCW. So it's it's game on. Oh yeah, we're, we're going to move our show next week down to uh, the eleventh because you know on Monday that Eclipse thing is going to be around that total Eclipse. You know everything going around, and <laughs> Nicole wants to go up to. Uh, Someplace out west, so we could see it. I'm like, okay, you know, just let me know what you want to do. You know, I, I'm I'm going to give you Monday. That's your day. Yeah, because 
Thursday is going to be our day. Yeah, that's what I told her. You know, she goes, that's fine. Yeah, so we'll talk about that. Yeah, you, yeah, you, uh, you come back from the Virginia game, you know, that, yeah. that, that, that morning. So yeah. we, can, we can recap, you know, you guys take on a, a Virginia squad. But back to this weekend against Northeastern, I hope this kind of some guy named Tom Glavin doesn't show up. Maybe he wants yeah, to stay down uh, in Atlanta to do the broadcast or the break. I, you know, I I ask. I did a. I had a little pro- podcast a couple of years ago with uh, one of my interns. He needed to do a podcast, and he said, "Hey, I need to produce one. Could I be your right hand guy? You do the interviewing." Yeah. I said, "Sure." So I interviewed Mike, and I said, "What was it like growing up, Glavin?" You know, and he was like, "Dude, let me tell you, it was the most competitive family." You know, we fought. We fought over the fork at the dinner table. You know? oh, so it, it was. Called, uh, you know, them Glavins like to play hockey. Oh you know, yeah. Oh yeah, they do. They're be- yeah, I think Tom's a good yeah. hockey player. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was hockey, basketball, baseball, whatever sport was in is what was on. And oh, yeah. said, You know, it was just you know, and and Tom obviously set the bar pretty high. So uh-huh. you know, Mike had to had to follow suit you know he played professional yeah. baseball as well for a while yeah, he got he a did. cup of coffee with the Mets so mm-hmm. he's he's yeah. been around you know he comes by his knowledge honestly he's worked hard to get where he is you know it's funny you you see a, you see coaches all over the country mm-hmm. making moves right and hats off to Northeastern for taking care of Mike Glab in the way that they do Right. to keep him because that's, you know, that's where his family's from and that's where he wants to right. be. And, that, and, and they have struck a chord with one another. And I believe he signed like an eight year deal last year or something like that. It was really a long term contract cool. to mm-hmm. make sure that Mike stays in Northeastern as long as, as he wants to, because I would imagine a guy with a, a pedigree and a resume like that, mm-hmm. it has got to be in conversations for these big time power five jobs. Don't you all think that? Right. Of course, of course. So I you're, mean, like, you're, gonna, you're like you're the guy who stay with say let's use uh, Florida State as an example because we had to get a new coach because Mike Martin retiring and look at the roster. Looking at Mike Glavin, brother of Tom Glavin, hmm. and you start thinking if we get Mike, we might get Tom. Tom might stop by. Tom might help out with the uh, with the pitchers, make us look a little bit better. That's, but but Mike said when I talked to him what, a couple of years ago, I haven't talked to him since. He said, "Yeah, Tom stopped by. My brother did, gave me some pointers with the pitchers." But I told him, "Go go go play golf. Go away." Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, no, you know, no, Chris, called, you need to tell him to go play hockey or go play hockey or something. Like, but, <laughs> you know, but, but 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 that's a great resource, and you can call your brother up, who is a Cy Young Award winner, who is in the I think he's in the Hall of Fame for the Braves. Or, or he is. Yeah, and you can call him and say, "Bro, what can I do?" You know, yeah, like, and then you just feed off all that stuff. And then you, when you get off the phone, you feel like you're a million dollars. You're ready to yeah. roll. True. Probably so. Probably yeah. so, man. But we're gonna see what we can do for the Huskies. See if we can't shut them down just a little bit. Go, go. <laughs> Bring them yes, back to reality this week. Rain out of here first. Yeah, get the rain out of here. Yeah. Yeah, come on, man. I need some sixty fives and seventies. Let's go. <laughs> I'll send you some warm weather from North Carolina because it was like spring yesterday and tomorrow. So it's like, um, yeah, it's called. It was it was nice, you know. And I know that, um, I know, and it's hopefully the weather will. It's called. Hopefully the weather will be really good against the Northeastern Huskies starting this Friday at 3 p.m. We started it, and all of you that are watching right now, you can watch it on Flow Sports yep. and on Sunday. Yep, that's it. Exactly. Well, Coach, thank you so much for coming on. I hope you had a great Easter yesterday besides winning. I hope you had a yeah. good meal with your, your family and all that stuff. So oh, I did, and it was a wonderful meal. Certainly, cool. that when added to it made all that food taste a lot better. Nice. Exactly, nice. Exactly. Well, we will talk to you next Thursday from here. You know, yeah. So we'll you know we'll reach yes. you up the Virginia game and get ready for that big series down in uh, Wilmington. You got it, you guys. Have a great week. All right. Thanks for the call. Right, See yes. you later. Go Tigers. See you. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. Bye. All right, that's Coach Matt Tyner, who we have him on each week here on the program. 
If you want some good baseball, you know, if you're looking for the local baseball, because I know the Orioles are out of town this weekend, you can go to this house and see them take yeah, it on yeah. Mike Glavin. And the, the, Orioles had a good start. and the Orioles had a good start to their year versus the Angels this weekend. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, even though it's called, it's called, it's called, we know one of the Angels' biggest fans, um, Missy Parkin. And, um, right here? Uh, it's like I it's called when I was called when I saw the highlights of the Angels versus the Orioles, I was like, I was like, okay, we had Missy Parkin on. She's a diehard Angels fan, and yeah, I will say this, Chris. Um, um, the Orioles' number one prospect is now in Triple A, Jackson Holiday. Yeah, he hit a home run. As, he hit a home run this. Uh, I believe it was, I believe it was uh, Friday night. And, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like left hander, and I yeah. do have the video. I have the video of it here. It is nice, right nice. There it is. It's, 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 this is down in Norfolk. And, you know, I guess they put the video like so far away. Yeah. Oh, that that was crush. That goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> I like the big scoreboard. Up, That's a huge scoreboard. To the Orioles. Uh yeah, I wouldn't want to face the Orioles because of Jackson Holiday and Adley Rutschman. And mm. I mean, right now the Orioles have a good shot, Chris. You know, to you know, well, the reason why American League East. Mm-hmm. The reason why he's not up in the majors yet because of that arbitration thing. Yeah, yeah which you stinks. Him, if you keep him down in the minors, like before May first, his mm. clock doesn't start until like. May first, so technically yeah. you won't have to pay him for April. That's true. Yeah, yeah. and or don't forget, kind of I mean, I mean, I mean, with the Pittsburgh, it's also um the Pittsburgh Pirates' number one uh draft prospect, Paul Skeens from um uh, LSU. He he's now he's now in AAA as well. So I mean, and don't forget about Wyatt Langford who. Last year he was on the Florida Gators, playing for a na- you know, mm-hmm. playing for a national title against Paul Skeens and LSU, and now he's a major leaguer on the Texas Rangers. Cheers. Well, speaking of the Orioles, uh, right now the Orioles and Royals are playing each other. You say that twenty times, Orioles, Royals. <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, yeah. Royals are coming off a really bad year. You know, they didn't they lost a hundred games after a couple of years ago, they were in the World Series. Wow. You know? Yeah, so that's when a small market team does. You know, you you build it up, you build it up, you build it up, and all of a sudden you're you know, you know, you know, you, you, you know, now you have you know, you gotta rebuild, rebuild, and rebuild rebuild. Yeah. So, and um in an update on LSU and Iowa from Albany with 19 seconds yeah. left to go in the in half. It's Iowa with a two point lead, 45 to 43. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that story from the Washington Post about the lady from uh, LSU, I think you need to read it. Yeah. I have. Because I think, yeah. I think and she is, she is a bully. And I'm sorry, I'm a guy. Yeah. Yeah. And she and the reason why she didn't want to do an article an interview with the lady, the guy from the Washington Post, is because he he made fun of Brian Kelly. Really? Really? That was the reason why you don't want to do an interview because you made you made fun of Brian Kelly. Come on. Give me a break. Thank you. Yeah. We we, we made fun of him all the time on this program. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, we yeah. did this. Yeah. And that guy just needs to not open his mouth. That's all you have to do. You gotta keep his mouth shut, you know. Uh-huh. So um, uh, so we're waiting for uh, Billy Sample, who is a George a Jam U um alumni who played uh played for the Rangers, Yankees, and the Atlanta Braves did. from nineteen seventy 1978 through 1986, so uh, back in the day when the Braves were, wasn't that great. But we do have an update from, you know, Camden Yards. Let's bring it up here. The Orioles and Royals are tied uh, at three. 
Yeah, we're just trying to kill some giant orioles and royals. All right, time. Oh so, yeah, um, yeah, and also let everybody know the why. Um, why is everything in blue tonight? Well, hold I, on. I, we're the highlight first. I got the highlight. Here's the Matt Castle. Uh, Ryan Matt Castle's one yard. Nice. So. One yard, you know, a two run homer over that beautiful little left field foul, foul pole down the left field line. So it's tied at three. And I think it's actually in the, I uh, was looking at it here. End yes. Of the uh, bottom of the six with two outs. Yeah. So three, three. Yes. Uh, tomorrow is, uh, if you are, uh, this month is National Autism Awareness Month. Yep. And tomorrow, if you are um, around town and if you're looking for things to do, uh, to wear, April 2nd is World Autism Awareness Day. Yes. I mean, see, I'm wearing a blue Met jersey. Thank so you. Thank you. It's hot. Yeah. It's hot. And I can yeah. say, I am wearing blue because I'm wearing blue socks. That's cool. So, uh, you yeah, know, National World Autism Awareness Day. And it's also, you know, the funny thing I just saw on different things for the month of April, you got that Autistic Awareness in Month. You also have National <laughs> No More Alcohol Month. Oh, come on. Oh, yes, oh, it is. Yes, oh, no on. more booze. No more booze per month, buddy. <laughs> oh, come on. I mean. Yeah, uh, yeah. I wrote it. I, I typed it in and it came up that way today. Like, it's Alcohol Awareness Month. Well, okay. I, okay. <laughs> um, You're like, okay. All right. What the? Steal my thunder. Like, here's my question. Was that alcohol awareness month? Don't get me wrong. I, I think they should do that. But what color did they use? They use Jim Beam's colors? I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Chris is called. I, I use this is the first time hearing about this. Okay, so, you know, I know. Maybe, I mean, it's all fear stuff, guys. So, yeah, please yeah. Uh, drink responsibly. And if you Thank know you. somebody who is, somebody who is uh, or artistic like adam who does a fantastic job you know yep. yeah so and also our good we, have, we have time also, we have. also also we do have to give a special shout out to another friend with autism our good friend kristen anderson from delaware who we had yeah, on we last do. year yes we had her on last year so we have time before we got billy sample coming on he's putting on an 805 but I guess he's running a little behind schedule here. You know, there's no text messages or anything. I guess the people forgot what time it is before Coach. Uh, we're going to have Coach Wilson and Coach uh, Pete Shimrick on at 820 because there's two teams around here for football. Um, Adam, talk about autist, being autistic like you are. You sure. Know. Um, what, tell sure. the first, what, what are the challenges you have to deal with every day getting up in the morning? What is the challenge? Well, sir, um, well me i'm high functioning and you know a lot of people a lot of people wouldn't realize that i'm autistic until they mm -hmm. met until they know me and you would never know but when yeah. i was growing up in, in new hampshire i was considered to be a special needs student in the new Foundry school district and yes i do stutter but i can't help that mm -hmm. and there was a lady who who work with all the special needs students. Her name is Debbie Doe. Okay. And she, and, and she and <coughs> not only did she work with myself, she worked with another good friend of mine. His name is Corey Wilkins and he lives in Southern California and he is legally blind. So, oh, wow. so, um, so she would help us in, you know, I'd have help with my <coughs> motor skills. Right. Um, I had to learn. Um, the teachers couldn't read my homework since I never left spaces in between my words. Um, I had to have help tying my shoes. I had to have help riding how to ride a bike, and it's still hard for me to ride a bike. And mm -hmm. I mean, it was I me mean, when I moved here to North Carolina. I was I was considered to be a regular kid in school and, and like i tell people yeah i'm yeah i have autism but you know something hasn't stopped me from achieving 
all the dreams I've got, you know, yeah. traveling around the country to see the best bowlers in the world compete, you know, mm -hmm. getting a chance to talk with them and, you know, getting <clears throat> with them, knowing everyone. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I mean, when I tell them what I do, it's like, I was like, yes, I do understand. I do this all by myself. Yeah. I don't have anybody helping me. And it's like, um, yeah, it's like, I mean, I have autism. So what? It's called, you know, yeah. so it hasn't stopped me from, from doing all the things I've always wanted to do. And, you know, I'm doing this with you, Chris, you know, I've done it for a couple <coughs> of years and I enjoy it. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, I mean, I never thought I would talk to all the people I have, you know, from the world of sports and it's like, you know, especially everyone from Towson, it's like, um, I consider them to be family. Yeah, I think it's cool. And like you said, you you live your dream, you're living your dreams. Like like you said, you have never thought you're gonna get a chance to talk to like, you know, <coughs> like people like Mike Norville. Yeah. You know, or or the people in you know at the ACC kickoff last year. You were like to me, I think yeah, you were like, like Yeah. And I look forward to go and Chris, when we go to the ACC kickoff in July, it's called um Wonder how crazy it's gonna be, especially with Florida State and Clemson swing the ACC. Um, yeah, yeah, it's gonna. It's, I mean, I mean, <coughs> yeah, it's gonna be really we weird. Go, and it's like when we see Co Commissioner Phillips and Coach Norvell up there on stage together. Um, um, yeah, it's gonna be like um, as. And when Clemson's up there as well with Dabo Sweeney. Mm, you wanna know how much <laughs> Yeah. So we're trying to wait for uh, Billy Sample to join us from you know the AJMU alumni who uh, <coughs> played a couple of years with the Texas Rangers. You know, here's a, a clip from him playing with the Texas Rangers back in 1983. Old, yeah. old yeah. Ranger uniforms. The old Ranger uniforms. Look at those suckers against the old White Sox uniform. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then he went off to um, to um, New York yeah. for one year, played with the Yankees. Yeah, you know, and here's him playing with the Yankees. Yeah, you know, against his old his old team, the Kansas, you know, Texas Rangers. And old, and yeah, old. So, um, that's and that's old Dave Smith who used to be, Yeah, here here's Billy Sample coming up to the uh, coming up to the plate. And so he's batting 264 at that time in 1985. And then, yeah, and then he finished his career in Atlanta with the Braves. Yeah. And the funny thing is, he got a hit off of some guy named John Tudor. Look at the old Braves uniforms back there in, the eight, in 1986. And there we go. He went at three, old he went Atlanta three. Fulton County Stadium. Exactly. So speaking of the Braves, the current Braves, they're on they're on a roll. They uh, went to Chicago yes. today, played the White Sox, and uh -huh. they beat them by a score of nine to nothing. And this guy Riley here hit one, hit a solo home run. Austin, Austin Riley, yeah. yeah. So they won nine nothing, and it was it was uh, called after nine innings. Eight of the, innings. Uh, eight innings because of the rain, but. Uh, yes. But the Braves and you know, Braves are on the roll again. Uh, uh, the Mets, Mets are struggling. Yeah, we had uh -huh. a hard time with the Brewers. Uh, uh, now, Chris is called. You know, uh, I actually have a good friend of mine who I work with, and yeah. um, she used to live in New York. And and from what she has told me, she used to take her <coughs> mm -hmm. yeah. bike to Shea Stadium um, oh, okay. for. You know, at the old Chase Stadium, and go see the Mets play. Even when they had, even when they had a double header. That's cool. Back in the old days, they had double headers. Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So we're waiting for Billy Sample to join us, and then hopefully we'll 
If not, we'll try to get them to come on a little bit later. Yeah, see where, see where, I, I saw that Iowa score. It's tied 45 all now. Uh, wow. And, yeah. uh, and um, oh, yeah, I'd let everyone know. Um, coming up at 845, we're going to talk some minor mm -hmm. league baseball with the manager of the Trenton Thunder, formerly of the Eastern League, now a MLB draft league, Adonis Smith. Mm -hmm. 905, we're going to switch gears to talk about the Norfolk Tides, and we will have the radio broadcaster, Pete Mishu, joining us. And then at 915, we're going to have Gareth Kwok on, who is a broadcasting and Hold on, let me get the coach on. So hold on a second. Nice. Let me get you all up here. Hold on, hold on. Chris, hey, how you doing? Doing good. How are you doing? Doing great, thank you. No problem. Thanks for coming on. And there's how's spring ball going? Hey, it's going well. That's cool. Yeah, we've had some good days. Nice. So really happy with the progress we're making. Nice, awesome. All right, folks, welcome to the show. Here. We got Coach uh, Pete Shimmerk on the show with us. Also, we will have Coach uh, Morgan State coach Coach Wilson on because these guys play each other again this year in the Battle of Baltimore. But Coach Wilson is going to be having something pretty cool, Coach Pete. Um, this Saturday, you will have the Maryland Terrapins stopping by. You know, yeah, during, about that. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. So let's first talk to you, Coach uh, Coach Pete. So talk. Yeah, you, know, you just said. Spring ball is going well and all that stuff. So just how many more practices do you have? Yeah, so we, um, we're we going to do our spring game April 11th, Thursday night. Okay. Um, and so that will be practice number 15 for us. So we've got three this week and three next week. So we just completed nine. Practice tens coming up. Uh, and, you know, we got six in before spring break, took spring break. Got three in last week. Really like how the guys uh, came back, and uh, looking forward to having another good week this week. Nice, that's awesome. Um, let's bring in Coach Wilson. Coach, are you there? I'm here. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Thanks for coming on to, uh, this evening, and uh, happy uh, happy Easter to both of you guys. I know you guys yes. had a great Easter with your families yes, and all that stuff yesterday. Yes, um, no problem. So talk about the reason we got you on. You're in starting spring practice, but you're having something special coming up this coming Saturday when uh, Coach uh, Loxley coming to town with his Terrapins to be part of a, a thing called Baltimore Day. So explain to the folks on our air what that's all about. Yes, yeah, it's just an, uh, a unique opportunity to uh, have Coach Lox and his staff and, and his team come up and, and, and visit. Uh, Baltimore and, and showed two universities uh, right here in the state of Maryland uh, involved together in the community, uh, give them an opportunity to see our quote unquote FBS program in the, in, in the state, as well as one of the FCS programs in the state. Uh, so we're looking for, you know, a, a pretty good turnout. And for us, it's a practice. You know, our guys will will uh, move accordingly. You know, we're not scrimmaging those guys and you know, anything like that. You know, we, we practice right before them. Then they'll, you know, they'll take the field and practice and uh, just get the community an opportunity to see both universities. That's cool. That's awesome. Coach Pete, we have Coach Pete Schimmer on the show from Towson. Uh, you know, Coach Wilson, New York, you guys are big friends, you know, friends mm -hmm. of the uh, friends of Baltimore. Um, Coach Pete, is, is, is that sounds like something Towson should do over in the future? Bring somebody up from like Maryland or somebody to, you know, to help, you know, bring out the program of Towson and everything else? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. And uh, really, kudos to uh, Coach for getting that done. And uh, I think that's a unique opportunity uh, to really, again, showcase uh, Maryland college football. And what a great way to uh, get more people to uh, see the two programs and be around the two programs. So, yeah, that's something that when we heard about that, we were like, all right, what, 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 what could we do that uh, kind of looks like that? So I, I think it's a great idea and um, happy for them to be able to get that done. That's cool. Adam, you got a question? For yeah, I sure do. Um, I was noticing, uh, Coach Emmerich, that um, the CAA times uh, were announced. And um, what's it going to be like to face Coach Wilson and Morgan State in 
prime time in September. Yeah, yeah. our game time, we're, we're 6.30 week two. Is that right, Carl? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I think that's right. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, hey, we got to get ready for that game. You know, we got we got yeah, we got spring ball. We got to get done first, and then we got to worry about everything else. You know, yeah. That's but uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, so no. talk talk about the times. Do you like the schedule you know, the CA gave you? Because I know you know we we don't know about Cincinnati. What time that game's going to be? You know, the first game of the year. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking that's probably gonna, maybe a twelve noon thing, probably. Yeah, you know, that might be, you know, in Cincinnati. Uh, and then you got to yeah, that up. would be, Chris, that would be ideal. We'd yeah. love to be able to get that game, uh, a noon game, uh, to be able to then get back. Yeah, you, you know, we've got we've got two home games um, in our first five, I think. Uh, Morgan State is one of them. Like William and Mary, uh, you know, we go, we go on the road um, to Villanova. We go on the road to North Dakota. We've got a bye, and then we play William and Mary. And so William and Mary and, and Morgan State are our two uh, home games. Both of those will be at six o'clock. Um, and so, um, you know, after that, I think we're all one o'clock kickoffs. And I think once you once you get past September, mm -hmm. um, you know, the earlier you can kick off, the better you know, the the better it is for us. Yeah. Same question for you, Coach Wilson. Do you like the uh... The schedule sometimes when you get the in times you like you everybody likes twelve noon. Twelve noon is a great thing. You get you get out of there real quick at three thirty four o'clock. You'll be home more by eight thirty nine. You know that's not bad, but you know, that's that's in the perfect. You know what about what, what about you and your your scheduling? Well, I, I, I feel the same as coach uh, with regards to those early earlier games in the year. You know, if you have some of those late games, and you know, you you can you can navigate through it a little better than you can later on in in the season. But uh, for us to play Towson uh, in the evening time uh, in Baltimore, I think it'd be you know great for the community. I think it, we're probably the only only show in town that particular night. So I'm looking for a very uh, festive environment. Uh, but you know, we we got some time for that. I'm quite sure Coach want to finish spring ball, and I want to finish spring. And go see some blue water at some point <laughs> before, before we start talking about uh, September and, uh, and August. But uh, and go eat some good and go eat some good seafood in, in Maryland. Indeed. Too. You know, yeah. the blue crab. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 We should have like a you know like in like August you know when they have like a, a press conference getting ready for the game you know we have between Towson and uh, Morgan we should all go to like a. Like a nice little restaurant, have crabs, you know, see who wants to pay okay. for it. Okay, I'll fly up. I'll fly up first. I'll fly up. I'll fly up first. I'm game. We'll have, I'm we'll, game. Go we'll farming page. You know, and just yeah. sit down and have okay. like, just have crabs and talk back and forth. And, you know, hopefully nobody throws punches. Just have a great time. And, and we'll like, we'll see you in September. Okay, have I'm a great game. day. Yeah. I'm game. Why not? Game. That'd be cool. Why not? Yeah. You know, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> right? So anyway, Coach, let's talk about your uh, spring ball for, for Towson. Um, how's your quarterback situation going? Yeah, we got great competition going on. We we brought in uh, Carlos Davis, and uh, he's done what we'd uh, what we'd hoped. You know, he's a guy who started a lot of games, uh, uh, started games at FCS, started games at junior college, started games uh, at the FBS level, and. Uh, he's done what, what we'd hoped, created great competition and depth in that room. Uh, Nate Kent, our starter from a year ago, he's had a very solid spring. Um, brought in Winston Watkins, a freshman quarterback. He came in early, graduated high school early, and really have liked what we've seen out of him. And Sean Brown, uh, who was our second-string quarterback, those guys have been battling pretty well. So uh, I like the room. Uh, like what we've been able to get accomplished, and uh, looking forward to seeing how this plays out the rest of the spring. Do you feel like after the last game of the year you win at home, do you feel like there's more excitement in the locker room knowing that you guys could do this? Yeah, I think our guys, you know, really got a great feel for what we're capable of, but also what we're not capable of. And I think, you know, our season last year was really uh, an up and down season, and you know, when I say that, we, we'd win a game, lose a game, win a game, lose a game, win a game, lose a game, win a game. That's how we ended the season. Uh, so I feel like our guys 
uh, got an idea of what we're capable of, but also uh, what we're not capable of and, and how we need to prepare every day uh, to be the type of team that we want to be. Right. Same, same question for you, Coach Wilson. How's your quarterback look, looking, you know, quarterback play looking right now? We have uh, three to four guys really competing. You know, we're returning um, three of the guys from last year, uh, brought a mid-year transfer in, uh, and is picking up the system pretty well. You know, we had some changes offensively. Uh, so picking up the chain, uh, uh, the, the system uh, pretty well. And uh, just they, they're all competing every day, you know, whether it's on the field and or in the classroom. Uh, we're starting to see uh, our offseason and our – extra work, pay a little dividends with the guys. You know, I, this is my second spring ball uh, at, at the university. And uh, I think we have the foundation laid now. And it's more so just, you know, continue to add pieces and continue to get better each day and do these little things right, which will eliminate, you know, losing those close ball games. Yeah, you pick up, if you fix it now, it might be, you know, fix up the little pieces now. Like when it comes to September and October, you can actually remember those little pieces and it could be a perfect place, to, like like the game last year in, at Akron. You had a chance to win, you know, and you you know you know you lost by two. You know, those you know those are little probably little things in there that maybe lose the game. This year, you probably win that game this year if you look at it. I mean, that's definitely the hopes. But you know, I gotta tell the guys, you don't win ball games until you have done everything you need to do to win those ball games, and uh, that's including everything off the field and on the field classroom work the whole nine and i think they understand that now and uh which you know which is a good step in the right direction yeah and you got a question for yeah, sure. whoever uh, 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 question for both coaches um, um do you rather prefer playing in the afternoon or or would you rather be playing at night all right, who's who wants to take that first one? Uh, for, for me, go ahead, coach. Go ahead, <laughs> go, ahead. go ahead, coach. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, for for me, you know, you you like to play, you know, early afternoon games, uh, just because you're able to, uh, kind of, you know, at that evening start watching that film and prepare for that Sunday and and, and for your next opponent. Uh, when you have the night games, it kind of takes away that opportunity to to start breaking things down. Uh, at 10, 11 o'clock at night for your next opponent. So, I mean, but there's this benefits in both. Uh, like I said, you know, you're playing Towson in the evening time and, and prime time, and you're, you know, you're not competing against any other college football programs in the area. So that gives a lot of opportunity for a lot of people to see both programs. So it has its uh, pros and cons. Right. Go ahead, Coach. Yeah, no, agree wholeheartedly, and I think um, – you know, I think I think Maryland in September. You have no idea what you're going to get. Um, you know, we, we we played in heat at the University of Maryland last year, and then we were in rain twice. Mm -hmm. You know, and our our game against Morgan State was beautiful. So, um, you know, but uh, I'll take I'll take the the afternoon game, like Coach said, because put it to rest, get it done, and then break it down, and then start looking at the next opponent, and you. Get you, you really get four or five hours, uh, you know, to prepare for your next opponent that you don't get when you're playing at six o'clock or seven o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I feel like I feel like the, your players are more focused if it's in the afternoon than the evening because you, you spend the whole day and probably like we say on the road. You have a game at seven o'clock. You're in the hotel until like by the time you leave the bus, like you, by the time you get over, on the bus to get over to the stadium, it'll be like five o'clock. So your players are sitting around watching TV and getting bored, you know, and what to, you know, and, and they, they, they lose focus sometimes when they're on the road. I feel like if you're on the road, you should do three o'clock, three thirty games and, you know, you'll be done. You know, why, is it, why you have to be seven o'clock because all these kids are young kids. These are college kids and they lose focus real quick after like what, five minutes, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, so anyway, you know, I, I agree with, you know, both of you, you know, good question, Adam, on that, you know, situation there. Um, Coach Wilson, I do have to ask you a question. Your game on August 31st was supposed to be in New York. What happened? Because it got changed down to to Hampton, Virginia, right? Yes, sir. We uh, you know, we signed a contract to play Hampton University. The venue was uh, up in the air. Uh, we were supposed to play it at a soccer stadium there, I believe. And apparently, mm -hmm. there's some uh, conflict uh, with the scheduling regarding the stadium. 
So we just moved this game to Hampton. Uh, it still will be uh, considered uh, the Brick City Classic, just not in New Jersey. But, uh, you know, we're yeah. going to have an opportunity to play a good Hampton team, and, uh, you know, we're looking forward to it. That's cool. Well, well, you guys, let me let you guys go. But thank you so much for coming on tonight, uh, Coach uh, Shimrick. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for being such a good host of our, uh, coming on our show each week. We appreciate it. Uh, hopefully we could do this after the spring game so we could recap uh, what do you think about the spring game. And Coach Wilson, good luck, good luck this Saturday with the, the Terps coming to town. I know you guys have, you know, you're not joint practices, but having them there and help promote Baltimore Day. And uh, hopefully this is a, something you can see uh, continuing throughout the next couple of years. Yes, sir. I appreciate you guys. Hey, Coach, take it easy and, and finish up healthy. No, thank you. You do the same and uh, wish you the best. Have a great spring. All right, you guys, we'll talk to you both soon. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Chris. All right, see you later. Bye. Uh -huh. All, right. All right, that's Coach Pete Shimrick and Coach Wilson from Towson and Morgan. Uh, we're trying to get a whole really sample. That's why I had to cut it short because he didn't know how to click a clip on the link. So, yeah, I guess. Well, I guess uh, I, I mean, yeah, but we got time to go. Oh. Yeah, we got time until you know when we get on here. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, let's so uh, anyway, so what's uh, we're waiting, we're waiting for uh, Billy Sample to join us. Uh, it was something really tragic happened on this date in nineteen eighty and nineteen ninety six. Let me bring it up here. Yeah, 1996. Veteran, uh, this might be a little gross for people, but Coach uh, the Umpire John McSherry died of a heart attack while he was on the field umpiring at the Cincinnati Reds home opener, and he was 51 oh. years old. Oh. Yeah. So, wow. uh, yeah, let me see if I can bring this up here. Do I have it here? Hold on. I have to, bring, I have to leave them on the videos here. Let me see if I have it. Oh yeah, Chris. Um, yeah, go I, ahead. I don't know if you guys heard about what happened to Fonte Davis. Yeah, I heard about that too. Our thoughts and prayers to go out to his family on that. Yeah, you, know, you know, very Yeah, with the Dolphins and he was with the Colts and you know he lived with the Bills too. So yeah, I had all a video. Loved ones, all your loved ones fight every day and night. Yeah. Hey, was he the one that basically just said, like, adios, amigo, I'm leaving? I I, yeah. th I think so. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, also, in 1975 on this date, um, Elvis Presley was at the uh, concert in Hilton, in at the Hilton in Vegas, and Barbara Streisand went backstage to offer Elvis the lead role of her upcoming movie, The Star Was Born. Mm -hmm. Elvis was interested in that video uh, movie. He goes, Yo, well, yeah, I'll do it. But Colonel Parker didn't want him to do it. Guess who got the role? Chris Gaskolfson. The country singer, Chris Gaskolfson, yeah, got the yeah, yeah, uh, that's the right. Role. Yeah. yeah, so so Elvis was, um, I guess, because he was not feeling well, or yeah, he was whatever. But he could have he, that could have changed the uh, the fortunes of Elvis if he had that opportunity. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, so it's 8.36 here on uh, a Monday night. Let's give you some updates here. We're waiting for people to join us you know, here on the sh big show. Uh, we'll be on next uh, Thursday, Adam, because of what the, uh, the total eclipse is going to be on on yes. Monday. I was going to take the move, you know, go Monday and enjoy that. You know, let's go see what it looks oh. like. Yeah, so we'll see here. So I'm trying to see who. There's a scoreboard, anyways. On here, sports. All right, so it's um, Baltimore and Kansas City are tied at three going into the top of the eighth in Camden Yards. Bottom of the six at City Field, we have no score between the Mets and Tigers. Uh, bottom of the seventh in Philadelphia, the Reds and Phillies are tied at two. Houston is on the uh, on the board. They're up three nothing on the Astros after having a tough weekend series against the uh, the uh, Yankees. 
you know, they were they had a hard time against the Yankees uh, yeah. um, over the weekend. Uh, let's see here. To, uh, top of sevens down in uh, Miami. The Angels and Marlins are tied at, at four. And that's all we got right now. Let's go to the basketball. Let's bring that up here. If they could give us a scoreboard here. Um, let's see here. They don't tell us what's going on. Oh, here we go. Let's go to Iowa. I'm on Twitter here trying to show you folks what's going on. 16. Uh, Caitlin Clark became the all time most three pointers in women's basketball history. Three pointers. Nice. It's so. 61. It's 61 52. Iowa with 423 left to go in the third quarter in Albany, New York. Wow. Here's a micro. Did you know what happened in, like, yesterday in Portland? I saw that. I heard about that. Yeah. Like the court was not both on two different. It was not measured the right way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, who, who does that? I don't know. Uh, and uh, and also, um, also this week starts minor league baseball too, Chris. Yes, minor league baseball with the, uh, the Bowie Bay Sox plays on Saturday, and then on excuse me on Friday, and then we. Uh, yeah, we'll be able to try to cover some of that stuff throughout the summer because I hooked up you know, opportunities to meet uh, some people. So, so let me send this back to him and see if he got it. So, anyway, so I'm still waiting for Billy to join us here. Uh, 8.40 here on a Monday. Um, what else is going on? Anything new? Um, oh, the uh, the arena, the Baltimore Arena, is now called the CFG Bank Arena. Mm -hmm. Will host um, a men's basketball doubleheader on November fifteenth. Uh, Virginia Tech and Penn State will be there you know, to play against one against uh, one of those games. So no Maryland this time around. I think they should have they should have got Maryland in there. What is Virginia Tech going to bring? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean. Um... Uh, yeah. I mean, and I will say this: it's nice to. Um, Florida State is, you know, uh, their baseball program one of the one of weekend series versus Louisville out in Tallahassee. So the way Florida State's playing, Chris, uh, hush my heart and never deliver to call it a World Series. To them, but this is the well, year that it could be. Jared. Never know. We got the guy from Notre Dame as the coach now from yeah. Notre Dame, and he did a really good job. So, so anyway, let's get, let's keep a let's, let's see if we have any uh, let's see if we got any updates here. Let's keep an eye on this women's basketball thing for you, folks. Mm. Um, it's, almost, it's almost time for the manager of the. At 8 45, we're gonna have the manager of the Trenton Thunder from the MLB Draft League, Adonis Smith, will be joining us, you know, to yeah. Hopefully we're gonna Trenton yeah. Thunder in the Eastern League. I mean, I remember them in the Eastern League, Chris. You do too. Yeah. They had uh they had uh the base locks, they had um you know they had, oh, the, yeah, they had one. Yeah, the Phillies, yeah, Red and Phillies are still there. Hmm. You know, they're not going to get rid of that that franchise. Come on, that thing's been around no. since like the set no. 1900s. Yeah. You know. oh. So uh, let's bring in, and if you, you know, we can bring them in early if you want to bring them in early. Sure. You want to welcome, welcome them? Go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. Um, you know, uh, speaking of minor league baseball, um, our next guest, you know, um, he's a manager of the Trenton Thunder of the. MLB Draft League, and I, you know, Chris and I remember when this team was in the Eastern League. So let's bring in the head coach of the Trenton Thunder from the MLB Draft League, Coach Adonis Smith. Hey. Uh, so George, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, and, and just talk about um, your upcoming season in the MLB Draft League. 
Well, Adam and Chris, appreciate you guys for having me on. It was a surprise, but a good surprise to uh, you know to come and speak on your show. So I'm grateful for that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. Super excited. Um, I've been in the draft league for uh, two years now. This will be my third. Uh, I was a hitting coach for Williamsport Crosscutters. Uh, did a phenomenal job there. And last year, a hitting coach for Trent Thunder. Um, and I was able to kind of get the uh, the blessing uh, to become the skipper this year. So super excited, uh, ready to get started, and uh, just kind of waiting to see the talent that's going to come. Yeah, it seemed like – and explain to folks the MLB draft league because a lot of people are like, why is Trent, why is Trent Thunder in the draft league? They used to be in the Eastern League. What's the, what's going on here? What's the – What's the deal? Why is Trent in Trent has a nice ballpark? Don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful ballpark. Yes. I think I drove past a couple of times in Trenton. I haven't been there yet, but I heard it's a very nice ballpark. But uh just explain to folks what the draft league you got college kids who basically are not who are trying to get drafted by a major league franchise, basically playing games so they could showcase their talent, right? Correct. Yeah, so okay. The, what the draft league is, there's 30, there's 80 games, it's an 80 game season. First 30 games are with uh, high school and college guys that are mostly on either someone's draft board uh, or have been highly touted or highly scouted. Um, and so they're split up amongst the six teams within the draft league. Um, and what they'll do is kind of, I would think it's more of a, to get a better eye uh, of those kids uh, mm -hmm. amongst the same level of talent. Um, and either those guys that are, you know, high school kids, uh, or, or college kids will either get drafted, signed, uh, or if they don't like their position, they'll go back to school. And that's okay. the first half. And then the second half is an, is an independent league, uh, professional baseball with guys that have exhausted their, um, their college playing uh, careers. And so it's the first step for them as professionals to try to move on and, and become signed as well. That sounds cool. That's cool for these kids because they, they need something because – if you're not, you know, if your college game, if you're not on a good college teams like Florida State and, you know, all the good teams around this country, you don't get noticed at all. I mean, I know JMU is a good school. There's some good, some players from down there. But I mean, basically all these kids are trying to get themselves out there. And if you don't have a great conference or a team that everybody knows, you know, how hard, it's hard for you to get your name out there. It really is. It's and it's a game of production. You know, it's a game of production, production, a game of uh, you know, projectability for a lot of these kids. Um, so if they don't produce, you know, when they're playing those high level kids, and they are, you know, depending on the talent that they're playing in their conferences, um, it could be tough for them. And you know, with you know, one with Major League Baseball cutting down the draft from you know forty to twenty, it just makes it that much harder. Uh, for guys to get a spot, you know, so there's a lot of talent out there and, you know, everyone's kind of chomping at the bit to, to, to get seen and be, uh, you know, put in front of as many scouts as they can with the hopes of, of being signed. Yeah. So you went, you played your college ball at NC state and also at North Carolina A&T. First of all, let's talk about the Wolfpack. What do you think about the, the basketball programs? You know, they both are in the, uh, the final four. That's pretty cool. You know, both women's and men, you know, they're playing each other. You know, yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So what's yeah, your take on dope. that? Yeah, I played at NC State, and then I played at uh, – I'm sorry. Yeah, what's your take on that? You know, those teams uh, you're on NC State going to the uh, Final Four. I think that's pretty cool. You know, both women and men both playing in the Final Four in the same I year. I think, that's, I think that's, that's awesome. I love it. I mean, it's one of those things that, I mean – especially this time of year, um, you know, it's a hot team. And, you know, NC State winning the ACC championship. And then, you know, they have a great squad over there, uh, you know, great coaching staff, you know, players are hungry, um, you know, and they're feeling themselves. And I love it. I love I love seeing, seeing, seeing teams, especially NC State, uh, to kind of get out and, and kind of show them what, it's, what, what they're all about. So that's cool. I mean, it's really neat. You know, I was at NC State for a couple of years, and then I went to NCA and T, kind of finished my career playing wise, um, and then I played independent ball for some time. Uh, but to kind of circle back, yeah, it's it's exciting to see. And my mom actually, she showed me her bracket. Uh, she ended up 
uh, penciling in NC State to win the entire thing, but she never played it on anything. But she's got a good bracket right now, I said. Okay. Right. I mean, I will say this, Coach. Um, I know you went to NC State. Um, uh, one, I actually had your one of your rivals winning it all. Um, team from Chapel Hill. So it's like, um, I will say, yes, I see <laughs> NC State. You know, going to Final Four. And thinking of NC State, um, how cool was it? You know, for you to play in the ACC, you know, at NC State since, you know, the ACC is always loaded with competitive teams, you know, like you guys and uh, Florida State and obviously North Carolina, Clemson, Notre Dame. Um, so what is it like to play college baseball in the ACC? You know, for me, it was, you know, I, I had very limited time at my time at NC State um, to, to actually be productive, um, as productive as I wanted to on the field. So after I transferred, it was funny that I got to play more of those teams with the Dukes, the Clemsons, the Carolinas, the NC State. Um, and it was a blast. Honestly, it was, it was just me kind of showing who I was to kind of, you know, bring out, you know, that inner dog in me to, to kind of prove myself. Um, and I thought I did great. I thought it was a, it was a, you know, you're always facing top competition. You're always facing uh, guys that are going to play at the next level for sure. And you just want to make mm -hmm. sure that uh, once you step on the field, that you're, you're just as talented and, and can do the same things as those kids, those guys can. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about your, uh, you've been in uh, Trenton for this is your second year and now you're the manager. Um, what managers uh, have you grew up watching? You have like you have your own set of you know, style of being a manager. Or are you like more like a Sparky Anderson? You just pull them out real quick, or you know what? Do you, what type of manager are you? If we go to one of these games, let's we'll say you got you come to Frederick this summer. Uh huh. You know, so me, I'm, I am, I am a what they call a players a players manager. I'm going to okay. be there for them um, thick and thin you know I okay. want them to feel comfortable I want them to be themselves uh, but at the same time you know you know fun is fun but once we hit that field I, they have to compete you know I, I want things to be um, precise and 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 but at the same time relax because that's the only way that they you can get the best potential uh, out of them. Um, but I want them to go out and compete and, and believe in themselves and and hold heartily understand that. I yeah, we can still hear you. Are you okay? We can still hear yeah. you. We're good. You're going in and out with the internet a little bit. So we'll make can you guys hear quick. me. Yeah, I can yeah. hear you now. Yeah. Just, you're going in and out. Okay. You had a little a little hiccup there. It could be on my end. You know, yeah, it I looks like I got a pretty good connection, but it's hard to tell. Yeah. But Adam, you got a question for Yeah, I do. So um you know, um going back um when you were playing at NC State um in your limited time, um, is there was there a team that you always look forward to playing, you know, come, come conference time or, or, or was there a non-conference opponent that you always enjoyed playing against? Now there's, there's quite a few of those, uh, those, those teams during that time, I think, uh, uh, had Mark to show there on the team. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't think I saw the field then, uh, um, through there, um, and then kind of flipping it whenever I did transfer, uh, to A&T to go back and play NC State, um, was a kind of joy to me. Um, actually, probably was one of the best games I had. Uh, at that time, I think I might have went. I think I was a home run shy of the cycle. I think I had a couple oh, cool. 
four wow. stolen bases uh, during that time, if I can remember correctly. Um, but also getting back and, you know, playing against your friends and playing against your, your teammates that you kind of went through the thick and thin with them. Um, just kind of seeing the flip side of it, you know, it was always, you know, a competitive, you know, an environment. And that's, you know, that's kind of how I, I wanted it to be. You know, and that's how it always was. So that was just one of those fun, fun things of, of, of playing in that, that conference or playing against those teams in, within the ACC. And how cool was it, you know, to, you know, you know, to have, have Mark Deshera as a teammate? Oh, he wasn't a teammate. He played, he was at Georgia Tech, you know. Oh, okay. But to watch him play, I mean, there was a ball hit. Uh, um, There was a ball hit. uh, And we found it on the other side of, uh, up next to one of the dorm buildings on the other side of the soccer field at the time. Wow. But, um, yeah, there was a lot of talent that came through there. We had some talented guys as well. but, you know, it was just a joy to kind of see, you know, firsthand what, you know, for sure a future big league looks like. Nice. Nice. Well, Curtis, we're being let to go because I know the Internet's kind of shady here. But thank you so much for coming on tonight. And we'll get you on before the start of the season. You know, you got probably, you know, plenty of time before you start in June, right? Or when's the first, when's the first game? Yeah. Yeah, June, June 4th. June 4th is our first okay. game. Um, cool. We're, right. we're home stand against State College. Okay. Yeah, we'll get you on. We'll get you on there in that week. We're on Monday. We're, we're probably going to be on Monday night. So we'll get you on that week and we'll, we'll preview that game with you guys. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you guys again for right. having me. Looking forward yes, to uh, another conversation. Yeah. yeah. Well, have a great rest of your week. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Right. See you. Right. You do the same. See ya. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Chris. See ya. Cool. Yeah. yeah, that was a little shady with the internet there. Oof. I, 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 I Dana Smith, who is the head coach, uh, the manager of the Trenton Thunder, was joining us on video there. Uh, we're still waiting for Billy Sample. I don't know if he knows how to get on, but we'll try to get on. We'll get on another time, folks. I guess I'll help to do, you know, StreamYard 101. <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh so let's we'll keep an update on that women's basketball game for you folks. It's uh, at the end of uh three. Let me bring this up. They're going to the fourth. And it looks like I was in the in the driver's seat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Going to the fourth, Iowa has a uh sixty-nine the 58 lead over the defending champions of the uh, LSU Tigers. So if Iowa wins, they go on to the final four in, in Cleveland and Caitlin Clark gets an opportunity to try to win another national, try to win a national title before she goes off to the WNBA, who is, she's yeah. going to be the first pick. Uh-huh. That, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, I mean, how cool would it be, Chris, to see Caitlin Clark in Iowa Going up against Coach Don Staley in the undefeated South Carolina Gamecocks in the national championship game in Cleveland. Well, I think that would be good. I think that'll be a great, uh, great game. Yeah, you know, for I mean, for, it could break yeah. records for the most. It could, it could break records for the 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 uh, the most watched NCAA NCAA women basketball game in history. Oh yeah, it will be. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. it should be. Yeah, it should be. Uh, yeah, the big big win. Um, we're gonna be on next uh next Thursday, folks. Reason because we were talking about uh next uh next Thursday night. Yep, seven thirty. Yeah, yeah, and I saw your friend uh Derek had a chance to, to talk to Guppy Trooper over the weekend. Did yes last night. Yeah, after how many uh, false starts? <laughs> I'm wondering if you uh, uh, yeah. yeah yeah and uh yeah it was uh. A lot of fun, and uh, coming up at 9.05, we're going to have the radio broadcast job, the Norfolk Cod, Pete, and Mishu yeah. is going to be joining us, and then at okay. 9.15, uh, we'll have Gareth Kwok on, who is, the, who is the broadcasting and public relations assistant for the 
Bowie Bay Sox. So well, I got I got to tell you a special thing, Adam. I didn't get a chance to tell you this. Coming up on next Thursday night at eight o'clock, we're going to be on at eight next Thursday night because we got this gentleman coming on. Tom oh, Baker. Yes. Good old Tom. Really, Baker. we got Tom Baker coming on. Yep, yeah, we got Tom coming on. He nice. he plays on Monday nights in the, in the league, so he can't, I can't get him on Monday nights, but. I remember watching Tom, you know, when I was a kid growing up on the uh, yes. Pro Bowl tour, and he was more dominant on the fall tour than he was on the uh, the spring on the uh, the regular tour. Nice. I think, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. One year, I think he won three or four titles in '85. Yeah, yeah. So he, he'll be joining us next week here on the program. And now he's the so force he, on the PBA 50 tour as well. <laughs> yeah, and he bowls with uh, Pete Weber. So and Walter Ray. Yeah, Walter Ray and all those people. I think yeah. I think Mike Albee might be. You know who, who we talked to last week about? They should they should have like a senior tour thing on TV. Um, Miss C. Jarrett saw last week. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, sorry. Okay. But this week bowling has been Detroit, right? For the World Series of Bowling. Mm -hmm. and, and after that, after the World Series of Bowling is. Time for Adam to fly away to Akron, Ohio for the Turn of the Champions. Right. And I will and I will get plenty of video and and try to talk to some people from Fox Sports to come on our show in the future. Um well, get, namely, get some phone numbers, get some phone numbers, get uh get Randy. I have uh you know, you know Rob Stone's email anytime I need him, you know, I it, could I mean yes. Yeah, I I will try to I will talk to Randy Peterson and yes it's called yes yeah. folks I'm going to try my hardest to get the Queen of Bolt the Queen of the PBA tour Kimberly Pressler to join us one night sometime this That'd year. So, so you head on out. What day are you on Thursday? I fly out. I uh, I fly out on the twenty fourth and I will get there okay. on the twenty fifth. For the oh, last two, um, uh, last year match play. Okay, twenty-four. Yeah, let me look at my schedule here real quick. Yeah. And then Saturday is the PBA Elite League, which um, and um, three teams have already punched their ticket to Portland, Maine in September for the PBA Elite League. They are the new, they are the New Jersey Kingpins, led by Co. Led by managers Carolyn and Carolyn Dorn Rowlett and her and and her legendary husband Dale Ballard. Um the Portland Lumber Jacks led by of course mm -hmm. by Tim Mack and they feature Kyle Troop and Wes Malott. Mm -hmm. Um they've also clinched a, a spot to go home, as you could say. And also the Las Vegas High Rollers have clinched a spot also up to Portland, Maine in September, led by Andrew Anderson, Sean Rash, and their manager, TBA Hall of Famer, um, Leto. We can get we can get Mother Kelly on Thursday next Thursday because we're on Thursday. Yeah. And he doesn't uh he doesn't bowl on Thursday nights. No. So we'll see if we can get them on. Maybe we'll, we'll do a PBA league next week. You know, if there, you know, if there's no, uh, no situations going on here. So anyway, it's nine o'clock. Let me bring it. Let's bring in this next guest. He's down in beautiful Queen City, where we were last summer, Adam. Yeah, down we in Charlotte. Were, yeah. yeah it's, uh, and they're there. The uh, Tide is there taking on the Knights tomorrow. A four game, a four game series down there in a beautiful uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, a beautiful ballpark. Down nice there. stadium. Really cool. Yes. That's yeah, we're bringing uh, Pete Michan, who is the uh, the voice of the uh, of the uh, the tide here. So, hey, Pete, how you doing? And happy Easter to you, sir. Same to you guys, and I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, thank you, thank so, you. How is the checks and how the uh, uh, stranded, you know, the sweepstakes going on? Did, are you enjoying watching him uh, hit? Because I know the first night he had a, a first pitch against a lefty, hits a home run. And then everybody up here in Baltimore, are like, you know, like, when is he coming? Yeah, <laughs> when is he coming? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's certainly that's the natural reaction of fans that 
you know, somebody of Jackson Holiday's caliber when he does anything at all, you know, they want him up immediately. But, you know, Mike Elias made it very clear uh, after announcing that Jackson would be opening the year in Norfolk that, you know, what he wanted Jackson to do uh, was to see more quality upper level left handed pitching. You know, one at bat does not accomplish that goal, even though it was a very good at bat. He's had a couple of other good at bats against lefties so far. But, you know, everybody wants to get ahead of themselves. But certainly Mike Elias has a plan. And, you know, you look at guys like, you know, Adley Rutschman and, you know, after him, Gunnar Henderson and others. You know, they've had a nice taste of Triple A. They've learned to dominate at this level. Let's remember a couple of key points. Jackson Holiday is still only 20 years old. In fact, only, what, three or so months past his 20th birthday. He won't turn 21 until December. Mm -hmm. He has still only had, you know, a small taste of AAA baseball. Uh, He's Mm -hmm. not really needed in Baltimore. There's no pressing need for him at the moment. You know, let him continue to get at-bats, play every day, and lead off here. And, you know, his day is going to come. Oriole fans don't need to worry about that. And I think he's going to be a great major league player. Just give him the time that he needs. Agreed. I mean, it's like yeah. when. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. I can yeah. remember. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Call, 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 I can remember. I can. I can remember Pete when Adley Rutschman was in college at Oregon State, and when he was a sensation, and the when the Orioles drafted him, I was. Everyone was wondering, when's Adley coming? When's Adley coming? Same thing with Gunner, and you know, and now, now everybody, now everybody wants to know when Jackson Holiday is coming. It's like, give him, give him time, let him do his thing in AAA, and when the Orioles say, "Come on up," he's coming. Um, you know, speaking of Adley Rutschman, how cool was it for you? Um, did you get a chance to call any of? Adley wrecked from the games when he was in Norfolk. I called every game that he played. Nice. When, he, when he was in Norfolk, obviously, and it was a, a pleasure to watch him and a, you know, a pleasure to be around him. Didn't get to talk to him very much personally. You know, obviously, his time was so much in demand, and I, you know, never really wanted to bother him other than for you know just an on-air interview and to say hello. But you know, it was indeed a pleasure to watch him work and to see you know his development and. And again, you know, and you look at Adley, you know, when he went up, you know, he didn't dominate immediately. He needed a little time to get acclimated to the big league game. And obviously, you know, he's become one of the best players already in baseball. Same thing with Gunner. Uh, it's not like he went out there and, and dominated immediately, but certainly he figured things out in route to being the rookie of the year last season. And, and you know, we see the same thing with a lot of other people, you know, Colton Cowser. Uh, was not good at all last year when he went up, had a wonderful spring. We certainly hope that's a precursor of what he's going to be for the Orioles this year. So, you know, even the very best players, the elite talents, uh, with rare exception, you know, just need time to acclimate to the level they're at, the competition they're seeing. You know, when you're looking at the best players of the world, whether it be a a pitcher coming at you as a hitter or vice versa, uh, it takes a little bit of time. And Jackson Holiday. He's only 20 years of age. I talked to him the other day and I said, uh, you know, how do you deal with all this? You know, knowing that you, know, you still can't even go out and buy a beer yet. So, and he handles it very well. He, he's very accommodating <laughs> to fans, to the media, uh, to his teammates. Uh, and yet he has a wonderful work ethic. And when he goes on the field, it, it, it is all business. And, you know, he's just, he gets better every day. And it's a pleasure to watch him just as it is. You know, watching the likes of Heston Kerstad and Kyle Stowers and mm-hmm. Connor Norby and Kobe Mayo and others that we have on this club. So, you know, just so much talent uh, on this team. And, and Jackson certainly, you know, getting most of the attention, but a lot of guys certainly deserve to be looked at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what happened to John Means yesterday? It was his first start. You know, he, didn't, he only pitched one inning, gave us seven runs, and he was done. Yeah, is, it, is he still coming back from that Tommy John surgery? Or I thought he was—I thought he was almost there. Yeah, well, I think he's—I think know, he's back. fine from the Tommy John. Certainly, he came back from that last year, made three appearances uh, with the Norfolk, and then had those four late season appearances uh, with the Orioles, in which he pitched very well, mm-hmm. had an ERA in the upper twos. Uh, now he's dealing with that forearm strain, and that's why he's on the injured list right now. Uh, I, you know, I think really this is just kind of spring training for John right now. And you know, he's out there just trying to find his mechanics, 
uh, you know, the one pitch that I thought looked really good yesterday was the changeup. But, you know, the other pitches, he, you know, he was missing his spots. Uh, you know, the wind was blowing out and a couple of balls were hit very hard that, that went out of the yard against him. Uh, so, you know, I, I wouldn't put too much into it. Yeah, it was a bad inning yesterday for John. So what, like I said, it's basically like a spring training game, just a little tune up for him. You know, he'll work on his mechanics and, you know, I, John Means is going to be John Means. All right. Yeah. So what do you think over over the weekend? It looked like Coors Field baseball down there. A lot of 12 run games, you know, uh, the Norfolk won two of them, 12 to six or 12. You know, and then yesterday it was 17 to, you know, it was a lot of runs yesterday. So, uh, yeah, 17, 17 to, to five, five yesterday. Like, how do you as a broadcaster keep you keep people entertained knowing this game is a blowout and and you're trying to keep everybody and yeah, it's Easter Sunday, so you're trying to keep everybody like, well, there's not a lot of people here. What do you do to keep everybody uh focused? Because I know I did arena football one time and it was a team that we, we were broadcasting, the team was losing like got gave up a hundred gave up a hundred points to this other team, and we still had people on listening to us. I'm like, why? It's a hundred to nothing, you know. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, it's like, funny. Home. Yeah. It's funny you, you use that exact word because I was broadcasting the game yesterday. It was seventeen to one at one point going into the ninth inning, and I actually said on the air, uh, for those of you that are still listening, I have two things to say. Number one, thank you, and number two, why? I even <laughs> said that on the air. Wow. Uh, just to have a little fun with it. Uh, because, and I was even surprised we had an announced crowd of, I think, about 5,100 yesterday. Wow. And there were still probably 4,000 people in the ballpark in the ninth inning. Wow. But it was a 17 to 1 game. So I was surprised at that. And and I even brought up, you know, the old line, if you remember, uh, if you're old enough to remember back, and I guess it was 1976, I think, when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, debuted in the NFL. And I think they went winless that mm -hmm. season and they lost one specific game and John McKay, their head coach uh, was asked by a reporter what he thought of his team's execution in that <laughs> game. And his response is I I'm all for it. Yeah. One of the great classic lines of all time. So, you know, you just have to have fun with it. Uh, let it roll off your back. You know, you get games like that, even for the best teams out there. And yeah, I certainly did appreciate those people that stayed and continued watching, but, you know, it's a tough sell, certainly when it's seventeen to one. Yeah. So let's talk about this series against the Knights, the uh, the AAA affiliate of the Chicago White Sox. I know they're struggling the the, the parent club because I know today they lost nine nothing to the uh, to the Braves in in the rain in Chicago, and then they had a tough weekend against the, uh, the Tigers. You know, you know, over the weekend. So what do you see in their AAA affiliate? Um, you know, is there anybody that's pretty good to stand out if I'm tuning into this game tomorrow night to listen to you and or watch it on video on MLB TV or whatever? You, you know, I have the, the package now to watch it. Yeah, it's so hard really to get any kind of a feel in AAA uh, because the rosters turn over so dramatically year after year. You know, guys move around. And if you even get a 50% return from a season ago, you know, that's pretty good at this level. Now, certainly Charlotte last year was terrible. Uh, they've been bad for quite a while. Their pitching staff has been absolutely horrendous. Unfortunately, the White Sox just have not given them uh, very much to deal with. So, uh, you know, I'm really at a total loss to, to say what we expect tomorrow night. I'm uh, more focused on the tides. I was actually just doing a little work this afternoon uh, on Charlotte, familiarizing myself with some of their players and, and what to expect. But and I can't really give you too much of a preview really until I get a chance to see them tomorrow night. Yeah. I love that ballpark. I went down there one time to watch the nice play. I was down there for the ACC kickoff and my buddy and I were like, Hey, let's just roll over and watch the game. So I got a media pass that whole ballpark. If people don't realize it still has Oriole stuff in there. You still have, you know, pictures of Eddie and, and Cal and uh, all because the Charlotte um, Adam, the Charlotte team was a, a double eight affiliate of the Baltimore Orioles back when I was a kid. And, yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. Cool. and it's pretty cool that it's like still, and it's the only ballpark. It's like besides the one down the tide, I'm a Met fan. Everything around the tide ballpark down there is all. Stuff. I'm like, where's the Orioles stuff? Where is it? Yeah, you know, like you know, but down here in Charlotte, it's pretty cool that you guys still you still have pictures of Eddie, Eddie and Cal, and uh, people who came through the farm system like Jim Palmer. You know, there's a picture of Palmer down there. It's really cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful facility, and you mentioned all the Oriole stuff, having been a long-time uh, Oriole AA club. Uh, I 
have always said, you know, over the last 10 or 11 years since that ballpark opened, uh, it is, in my opinion, the best facility in minor league baseball. It's just a, it's just a small version of a beautiful major league ballpark, probably has the best nighttime view of any facility yes. uh, in this league. You've got all yeah. the tall buildings in downtown Charlotte right outside the building, and they're all lit mm-hmm. up at night. Uh, the building is sort of a little, rather the uh, playing field is a little lower uh, than the surrounding ground level. So it makes everything else outside of the ballpark uh, loom even larger. It's just a, a wonderful mm-hmm. place. You know, the lighting is great. The music is great. Uh, the, the ballpark is clean. It's in a very nice area, about a block or two away from the football stadium, uh, just mm-hmm. a few blocks away from, from the center of downtown. Uh, and I tell people, if you're going to go to one place, uh, you know, in Charlotte. the International League to see a game, you know, Charlotte is the place yeah. that I recommend. I okay. mean, you can go, I mean, you can go, to, I mean, you mentioned, you mentioned Bank of America Stadium. You can also go down to, if you're a NASCAR fan, you can go to the NASCAR Hall of Fame. It's right there. Um, there's a lot to do in, I know there's a lot to do in Charlotte, but we're in March Madness time and you were the voice of Old Dominion University for men's women's basketball for five years. So, what was that like calling games for the Monarchs? Oh, I, I love doing college basketball. That was back, uh, I, I did all of the women's games for five years. I uh, had, you know, several NCAA tournament appearances. Uh, it was a little after the real heyday of the likes of Nancy Lieberman and, and Ing Nissen and Ann Donovan, but still had some really, really good teams under Wendy Larry. And I did a lot of the men game, men's games during that same five-year period. Uh, Chris Gatling, who who had a decent NBA career, was probably the biggest player we had at that time and, and had a couple of NCAA appearances. In fact, the last game that I ever called for Old Dominion uh, was an NCAA tournament game. We played Kentucky in the first round of the NCAA tournament uh, up at the old Centrum in Worcester, Massachusetts. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, and, and I still remember to this day showing up and looking for my broadcast position, and it was right at center court, which was magnificent because a lot of times the NCAA tournament games are so crowded, the broadcasters might get stuck in in weird positions. Mm -hmm. And I see the Kentucky broadcast position was like on the baseline down at the end of the court. And if you know anything about Kentucky basketball, Kay Wood Ledford, one of the all-time great historic broadcasters of college basketball, uh, was you know late in his career at Kentucky, and I just found it sort of funny uh, that I was given uh, the position right at the middle of the court, and this legendary voice of the Wildcats, Kaywood Ledford, was all the way down to the baseline. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. That's awesome. We got to let you go, buddy. But uh, good luck tomorrow on the broadcast. Hope you guys I hope the weather's good down there in Charlotte. I know there's uh rain and coming up our end so hopefully you guys can get that stuff out of there for game time but I'll, you know, yeah, good it's called, yeah. Work I'll, I'll, and, uh, I'll give you some North Carolina what it's called I'll send some, I'll send some sunshine from the Smoky Mountains all the way to Charlotte <laughs> yeah the weather looks great here especially for the next two days looking for yes. temperatures you yep. know in the, in the upper 70s maybe around yep. 80 and then I think come Thursday that cold front comes in and then we're yeah. looking at some uh, much chillier weather. Hopefully not any rain, but definitely going to be uh, much cooler over the weekend. That's cool. cool. Well, I hope to see you in the summer. I'll try to make a trip down to Norfolk to see you. you know, That'd but, be wonderful. Uh, I'd love to see you guys there. All the right. Uh, we'll keep in touch, okay? All right, guys. Take care. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. That's a, he's the voice of the, uh, the tide of uh, Norfolk Tide. You know, it used to be the tie water tide if you're an old Met guy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Richard would join us tonight here live from Charlotte, North Carolina, where we're going to be there in July, you know, hopefully for the, the ACC. ACC kickoff. It's called you so, and I, I and, uh, and, we're going to to recruit, and we're going to try to recruit uh, Danielle Kelly to join us too. Yes. We'll hopefully get her to join us. We'll bring this last guest. I'll give you the, uh, the honor to bring him in. Sure. Um, speaking of my, speaking of my league baseball, we go from North, we go from Charlotte, North Carolina, back up to New York Christmas in Boot in in Boot, Boot Maryland. Maryland. <laughs> um, we're gonna talk some Bowie Basehawks 
baseball. So joining us now is the broadcasting and public relations assistant for the Bowie Bay Sox. Gareth Kwok is, is joining us. So Gareth, thanks so much for joining us tonight and and just talk about the upcoming season for the Bay Sox. Yeah, Chris Adam, thanks uh thanks for having me on. And uh yeah, we are we are pumped to get going for this 2024 season. As a matter of fact, today we uh, in conjunction with the Orioles, the, the Bay Sox just announced their 2024 break camp roster. And mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a loaded roster. There are three top 10 Orioles prospects and eight in the top 30, including Orioles number two prospect Samuel Basayo, and uh, as well as number seven prospect Dylan Beavers. Number 10 prospect Seth Johnson is also on the roster, on the break camp roster. So uh, to already have three top 10 O's prospects uh, right from the start, I think is extremely exciting for, for me and, uh, and, and for the rest of us here at the Bay Sox and for the fans. And uh, we're just ready to go uh, opening day on Friday. Yeah. Uh, you got Seth Johnson, who is the number 10th, uh, you, know, the, you know, draft pick for the Orioles. He's coming back uh, from Tommy John surgery. So I guess that Tommy John thing is really uh, one of those affecting uh, injuries. I said he was just there last year for one start. Now he's going to be there for probably, I don't know how long until he gets himself up to the AAA or, you know, sometimes they don't want to go backwards. That's the, that's the major, major goal. They don't want to go back to, no offense to Aberdeen. I like Aberdeen really well. Their, their ballpark's really cool. But um, just talk about your career in broadcasting. I was looking on your bio and I was like, wow, this guy is a well-known traveler. You know, you, you're in the Pac-12, doing the Pac-12 games. I need to ask you a question about that because, there's no more Pac-12, man. What are you, what are you gonna do? <laughs> you know, we got, I'm we, got bummed, Stanford, man. we got Stanford and uh, Cal going to the ACC. It's like, what the? Why all the sports is going on, man? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So talk about your experience in the Pac-12 because it was there at Arizona State for men and women's basketball. What was it like? Yeah, you know, being there with 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 a uh, a Hurley uh, brother being one of the coaches. Yeah. No. It, it was uh, it was really fun uh, getting to. Uh, attend Arizona State for my 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 bachelor's in sports journalism degree and getting to broadcast a lot of different sports at ASU and including men's basketball and getting to cover Bobby Hurley and and his team and uh, you know Bobby's uh, Bobby's a fury a, a fierce a fierce coach on the court and uh, expects a lot out of his guys especially you know from his guards and from his backcourt because he's a he's a college Hall of Famer himself uh, and a national champion. But um, yeah, I think I'm I'm equally as bummed as you are, Chris. I mean, as, as a student, you know, we would on the weekends go travel to all these Pac-12 schools and these campuses. So you know, we would go to you know Washington, we would go to UCLA, and uh, probably my most memorable, one of my most memorable experiences in college was getting to call Arizona State versus UCLA football at the Rose Bowl oh, uh, for the, the student station. And uh, yeah, and, and, it, and it helped that Arizona State won the game at the end. So that was certainly a, a top, probably a top three moment in, in, in my uh, time at, at Arizona State. And so it, it was just fun to get to travel to these different types of schools. You're going to Cal, you're going to Stanford, or you're going to USC, um, even Colorado and Utah. You're just going to places that you normally wouldn't go. But hey, you're, you get to watch some Pac-12 action. And now it's, it's sort of a bummer for these, uh, for these next group of students. That now, now they, they now they might have to go to the. I don't know if they're they're going to go to Boston College or, or or Syracuse. That seems a that seems a little far if you ask me. Down to yeah, Phoenix, I, but um, yeah, okay, it's really Gareth, now, yeah. Uh, right, man, now, right. Now, since you went to Arizona State, um, talk about the rivalry in the Territorial Cup between Arizona State and Arizona because. For people who don't know, um, when those two schools play, it, it does not matter what sport. It's all it always produces some incredible action. Am I right, Gareth? No, it, you're 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 not wrong. I mean, it's one of the oldest rivalries in in college sports. I mean, you're dating back all the way back into you know early 1900s, and you know that. That's the, the Territorial Cup is one of the oldest uh, oldest cups in college football. So 
I think fans were happy to hear that, okay, like that the rivalry will, will stay. And even though both teams are now going to the big 12, but I mean, yeah, as you said, for, for, for football, you know, basketball, baseball, uh, you know, and, and women's, women's hoops as well, both teams with, um, you know, have had, have had success against one another and really, you know, softball as well. Both teams, uh, I mean, across the board, you name it. I mean, just the, the rivalry runs deep <laughs> in both and, schools. And yeah. Gareth, um, I was reading um, last year you were in a state that I'm very familiar with because I used to live there. So talk about your time with the New Hampshire Fisher Cats. Yes, that's uh, where it all started for me. Is um, this is this is my second year in minor league baseball, but last year was my first with uh, in minor league baseball, and it was with the New Hampshire Fisher Cats. And uh, yeah, had a had a great time up in New Hampshire, and it was definitely pretty cold up there the first couple of months. You know, a lot of a lot of forty degree uh -huh. games, but uh -huh. but um, but yeah, you know, as, as somebody you know who had who had done. Um, you know, three seasons of summer collegiate baseball to finally get, you know, a belt, a, a year of, of professional baseball under my belt was really something I was, I was proud of and happy of. And New Hampshire certainly achieved that. And, and now I'm eager to just get it going here uh, in Bowie and here back in the DMV where I, I, my first job out of college was with the Frederick Keys uh, mm -hmm. as their, as their broadcasting and, and public relations assistant. So it's really good to be back here in, in a place that is uh, is very familiar to me and, uh, and, and a place that I, I've called home before. Yeah. Well, congratulations on the, uh, you know, you made the, you got the Jim Nance Award back in 2022, the best uh, baseball softball play-by-play -play guy uh, by the Intercollegiate uh, inter Broadcasting System, the IBS. That's really cool. So explain to folks, what, what is the Jim Nance Award? I know Jim doesn't come to your house and go, hi, friends. How you doing? <laughs> like with that commercial now on, uh, yeah, for the, uh, the the Capital One, like Jim, you the hobby, dude. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just explain to how did you get, how did you get nominated, and how did you win the award, and how did you find out you won it? Well, I I don't want to take credit for something, but I mean, I didn't win the award. I, I was I was like a second team All American okay. for right. the award, so I was I guess one of the the top. 10 you could say so yeah. uh, as much as i yeah that, that sounds pretty good when you were saying it to me though yeah but, um, you should be top, top yeah. one you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i appreciate it but yeah no i mean this it's a it's an annual um you know competition amongst uh, collegiate sports casters run by the sports casters talent agency of america staa and really it's for you know as a collegiate sports casters to showcase their best work and put together, you know, about a, a 15 minute or so reel showcasing, you know, their play by play, their hosting, their interviewing, mm -hmm. their anything, anything that really showcases their talents as, uh, as a sports caster, whether it be TV or on the radio. And so, um, you know, for me, uh, I, I wasn't recognized the, the first couple times I, I, I was, I submitted an application. And so I was really hoping my, my senior year, I would get, uh, some recognition and, you know, really worked hard to try and put together something that was entertaining and something that I was proud of and was really happy to be named, you know, one of a select few. There's really only, you know, 25 or so, and there's hundreds of hundreds of those students across the country that are applying. And so to be named one of, of about 20 or 25 in the country uh, as, as one of the best was certainly a, 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 an honor. Yeah, that's a good feather in the cap there, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Like that, you know, you know, cat, little cat yeah. Hey, that's pretty cool. You know, like, absolutely. Like with me, you know, I, I've been doing this. You know, this is like my. You know, I, got, I went to Harper Community College, and you know, they had a radio station up there, and I started doing this stuff, and you know, and I'm doing my own little internet radio, and I enjoy doing it. You know, it's fun. It's cool. You get a chance to meet cool people, and you probably met some cool people along the way. And and some days I have to pinch myself going. Did I have that guy on my show? Really? <laughs> you know, like, we, had, we had Steve Sachs on, like. Last year, and I'm, I'm thinking like, and I told my brother, I got Steve Sachs coming on. He's like, "You have Steve Sachs coming on? Like, how the heck did you pull that off?" I'm like, "I don't know." Don't well, ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, but if you be, but if you be professional and you look and you, you have a good time, like we're having a good time now, and being professional and feel like you're, at, you feel like I feel like you got to make these people feel like you're at home. Yeah, you know, like you're coming to your house. Yeah, you know, you're coming in for like, hey, let me give you a cup of coffee. Sure, and you want you want a donut? 
Yeah, like people come in, like you go to people at other people's houses, they're like, hey, you know, do you want something to eat? Sure, I'll take a bowl of that. You know, that's what I look at it. Is, and you probably do the same thing when you're, you're games. You make you feel like you're sitting next to the guy going, all right, it's first and uh, one, uh, one ball and two strikes, you know, and here's the pitch. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Who did you grow up idolizing as a broadcaster? Because I with me, I grew up in the 80s. We have so many great broadcasters like Bob Murphy and, you know, and Chris Schenkel on, you know, ABC's Professional Bowlers Tour and on ABC and all that stuff. And, you know, who did you grow up watching in the Bay Area? Because I know the Bay Area had a lot of cool broadcasters. John Miller. John Miller. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You took it right out of my, out of my, out of my words, man. Like that's, that's literally who. You know, John Miller, Dwayne Kuyper. I mean, you know, I grew up a Giants fan and, um, you know, you, you, you're, you're fortunate enough to, to learn and, and listen to what many people consider to be the best broadcasting team in the league. Right. Yeah. So that's that's John Miller, Dwayne Kuyper, Mike Kruko, Dave Fleming. Those are those are all, you know, people I, I literally grew up watching like, you know, every day when I was young. And, you know, that's that's yeah. I probably watch I probably watch too much to, uh, you know, my mom was probably like, hey, get off the TV. You know, <laughs> how many hours I've been watching. But right. no, I mean, you, you you know, you just listen to them and it just it, it just feels like they're, you know, in the living room with you. You know, you're, you're sharing a you know, you know, you're sharing a drink together, or, you know, just having a meal together and, uh, or, and just and they're, and they're talking about baseball. So I think that's. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't get any better, I think, in terms of mentors and, or, or at least, you know, inspirations to learn from. And, right. uh, you know, I think he's 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 uh, he's he's certainly up there. Did you get a chance to meet him? I uh, have not. have not. But would, would he's a good guy. I'd love to really some, cool. someday. Yeah. 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 I was, uh, it was years ago is when he got inducted in the Baseball Hall of Fame, that, that mm -hmm. wing, you know, the four thick wing. And I was having the Washington Nationals, and I asked him, like, asked the guy, can I interview John Miller? He was like, well, he's upstairs. So I went, I went upstairs. I go, hi, Mr. Miller. I'm Chris Lydon. He goes, so uh, are you from Baltimore? I was like, yeah. He goes, come on up. Come on up. <laughs> because he still loves Baltimore. No matter no matter what happened with the Orioles and, you know, and Peter Angelo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I sat down and had a nice conversation with him about his career and how he, he learned to be a broadcaster and all that stuff. And I saw him a week later at – Cooperstown. I said, thank you so much for doing it. He goes like, oh, no problem. Keep in touch. I'm like, okay. I'm like, wow. <laughs> like, this is cool. He's a class, yeah. he's a class egg, isn't he? Yes, he I, is. I, and, and he's like, and he's funny with his voices. You know, he could do Ben Scully yes. and he could do other, other people. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, you know, like this is a this is a cool dude, you know. So yeah. yeah. I, I still miss John Miller and Joe Morgan. Oh yeah. yeah. Morgan, oh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. like um, yeah. I mean, it was like I mean. Uh, uh, you know, I can always remember Will the Thrill Clark, first baseman for the San Francisco Giants at Candlestick Park. And I mean, and of course, can't forget about Barry Bonds, you know, yeah, playing with the Giant. Uh, playing, two, two of the best, know. man. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, wow, well, yeah, he was, he was a good hitter. Yeah, Will Will yeah. Clark, you know, and him and Rafael Palmero in uh, college, you know, the uh, thund what thunder and lightning. They call yep. so. and yep. to be safe. Yep, that's right. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, I know Garth hopes that tomorrow you see uh, this week some thunder and lightning, not that not the sky, but the baseball, you know, idea. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, so what's the uh, what's the plan for? I know tomorrow you're going to have media day. Sorry, I can't make it down there. I have uh, I have my other job I have to get to, and by, with all this traffic problems. Now with the uh, the Bay Bridge going out, you know that's going to be a, mm -hmm. that's going to be a disaster with the Key Bridge, you know. So uh, just talk about this week. What do you have to get yourself ready for Friday? Hopefully the weather gets back out of here and it'll be a nice weekend. Yeah, well, you know, I, I think lucky enough, you know, we're gonna we're gonna be okay. I think for this weekend, it's looking like we're gonna be all right, and the rain is kind of making its way through now, but shouldn't be much of a factor. Hopefully this weekend, I think that's the hope and. We should have a pretty good turnout for Friday and Saturday for those first couple of games. And Friday and Saturday, I believe it's uh, fireworks nights post game. So, um, you know, for those that are, are are trying to trying to begin the season out right and, uh, and and get get a taste of of what's to come for the Orioles in the future, uh, no no look no further than the Bay Sox this weekend at Prince George's Stadium. And you're taking on the uh, Reading the Reading Phillies, you know the. You know, up there, Reading, Pennsylvania, and then they minor league baseball is weird. Now they have like a 
what a five game series, except for the first, except for the open, yeah, except for the opening weekend. It's like the you know what first four and that's it. You know, and then it's all down you know, back to six after that, right? Yeah, we we'll start with a three game series from this Friday through Sunday, uh, and then Monday is a travel day for us. We're gonna go. Our first road series is up in Hartford, Hartford, Connecticut. Oh, the yard so, goat. so we're gonna we'll play the yard goats up at Duncan Park uh, next next week. So uh, yeah, yeah and then that will that will be a six game series. Nice. That's now, awesome. When you go up to Portland, Maine, Gareth, um, um, it's called um. I'll, when you go up to Portland, Maine, um, go get you some authentic lobster. Uh, it's called. Oh yeah. If you like seafood. Portland, Maine is your destination for some of the best lobster you'll ever eat. Take it from me. Oh, no. Yeah, no. It's uh, I had a chance to go uh, last year when I was up in New Hampshire. We went a couple of times, and that's yes. one of my favorite yes. one of my yeah. favorite cities in the Eastern League for sure. I mean, yes. especially yes. especially when it's uh, when it's warm in June and July. Yeah, yes, it's, it's yes. Uh, you're, oh, there yeah. all, you're there with that's, all the Sox fans yeah. and. Uh, it's just it's just gorgeous, you know. I, I know I've heard here I've heard here down here, you know, it's it's nice, but you can get a little can you can get a little muggy. So <laughs> I'm I'm prepared though. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, well, we'll let you go, buddy. But I know you have a lot of stuff you have to do tomorrow. So thank you so much for coming on tonight, and uh, we'll keep in touch. And I'll be down there for some games because my schedule is really weird during the week. You know, I have you know only one day I have Thursday off, and hopefully you guys play on a Thursday. Yeah, so I could be there. So. Uh, but we'll keep in touch, and uh, we'll get you back on, on on a Monday, wherever you are. All right? All righty. Thanks, guys, for having me. All right, buddy. Appreciate Talk it. to you soon. Have a great time. Yeah, yeah. All righty. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. All right. That's uh, the new voice. Um, newsflash, uh, I would beat uh, LSU tonight. So Iowa goes yeah. into the, uh, the national semifinals. And then we have, uh, we have some drama uh, coming out of Baltimore. <laughs> you like that? Drama. Chris, you yeah. say drama now. Yeah, a little drama. Well, yeah, what's up? Tell me about this, this drama. Courtesy, this is courtesy of the folks at Masson here on on the, the Twitter page. And some guy named Jordan Westberg at the plate. Right side from Westberg. That ball driven deep. That ball at the wall. That ball is a game winner. Westberg with a wild, wild walk-off. Orioles win it 6-4. So that's one of the folks from uh, Masson. Uh, thanks for letting us use that real quick. Click clip on the uh on twitter let's take a look at the uh you know, the folks in, in queens let's see what's going on with them and the mets are struggling right now you know this year but hey i still root for them oh uh, uh, yeah. oh yeah uh going to the top of the 10th <laughs> and uh we got no score at city field after uh, uh diaz came in to pitch a quick one two three nights yeah, it's good to see him wow. back. Hmm. So coming up for the Mets in the top of the you know, bottom of the tenth, I think I saw it. Uh, DJ Stewart leading off for the Mets, former Florida State uh, great and uh, yes. Baltimore Oriole, who I talked to when he was here in Camden Yards. Nice. So, well, we're going to wrap it up the show here. Uh, we'll get uh, Billy sample on next Thursday night because you know because he had problems getting on, and I was going to. Be the uh, his tech support to get him on next week. <laughs> next week we'll get him on, but next Thursday night we'll have uh, this guy on our show. You know, Mr. Tom Baker joining us. Uh, did you know uh, Adam? He broke his wrist. Yes. And the way, and the way he holds the ball, yeah, he, he somehow he broke his wrist back when he was, uh, he, you know, like you know, eighty one or something like that, and uh-huh. he had to find a way to bowl. And that's why he had the weird, um, weird delivery sometimes. Like he, he takes the ball, you know. Let me uh, turn this video off. Um, he takes the ball and he he, he bowls like 
he, he, he turns it this way mm -hmm. and he gets up and he rolls it down that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, crazy, crazy, crazy. So we'll have uh, Tom Baker on next Thursday night, uh, April 11th, because next Thursday, next Monday, April 8th, is a solar eclipse um, out there, and we're going to enjoy it. Um, and you might be in a good area for that next week. I right? am. I am. I am. I'm going to see a, a partial solar, a partial solar eclipse. So um, I'll have mm -hmm. my special solar eclipse glasses on, and uh, looking forward to nice. seeing it. I, uh, I well, last time I saw you? one, um, um, I can remember it was a, a couple years ago, and I. I was at my old job then and um, mm -hmm. saw it, and um, I thought it was quite cool. That's cool, dude. Yeah, so we'll see you guys next Thursday, uh, April 11th at 8 o'clock. In the meantime, we're going to leave you with a classic uh, baseball tune. This is from uh, Duran Duran. When I was a kid, there's a Met video called Wild, a song called Wild Boys. So mm -hmm. we're going to play this real quick, and we'll see you next Thursday night at 8 o'clock with Tom Baker and Billy Sample here on the show. So thanks for joining us.